Hello everyone, I'm Rodney from 3dgameman.com and today I'm looking at the Silverstone Nightjar NJ520 520 watt fanless power supply. It comes in this very informative box that has lots of pictures, features and specifications about it. Inside you'll find a user's manual, a spec manual, a bag that has four plastic cable ties, four Velcro ties, and four regular silver screws. The power supply is silver, so that kind of matches the power cord. And this bag that has all of the modular leads in it, I'll show you those later on. The power supply itself is packaged very well, and it comes in this cloth bag. Now let's have a look. Now first of all, the Nightjar line ranges in wattages from 400 to 520, and their main focus for these power supplies really is for quiet builds, you know, somebody who wants a super efficient power supply, but one that's also fanless. Now this power supply is only 520 watts, but for the application it is going to be more than enough power. I mean, this is not a gaming power supply. So how is this wattage determined? Well, to understand that, you need to know what rails are, and rails are basically basically well-regulated transformers which convert domestic current into the voltages that your computer system can use. And there are essentially two different rails, a 3.3 slash 5 volt rail and a 12 volt rail. Now in this particular case, the approximate maximum peak output of the 3.3 slash 5 volt rail is 100 watts and the 12 volt is 516 watts. The 3.3 slash 5 volt rail is responsible for the motherboard, memory, PCI cards and so on while the 12 volt rail is responsible for the hard drives, optical drives, fans, CPU, video cards, etc. It's also important to know the peak amps on each rail. Well, in this case, the plus 3.3 volt and the plus 5 volt rails are 20 amps each, and it has a single plus 12 volt rail, and it's 43 amps. Now, I've said this many times, but when you're looking for a power supply, please don't cheap out, get a quality brand name power supply. Sure, you'll spend a little bit extra, but you don't want something to happen to this and then, you know, fry the rest of your computer system. There are other important things, though, you need to remember when selecting a power supply. And the first is really wattage. You need to determine how much wattage you are going to require for your complete computer system. Now, generally speaking, a medium to high-end gaming rig would require a 500 to 700 watt power supply, but again, this power supply really isn't designed for a gaming rig. I mean, you could if it wasn't too hardcore, but for a hardcore system, you know, select a power supply that's around 800 watts. Now, if you're building an extreme gaming rig with a top of the line, multiple video cards set up with lots of other hardware, select a power supply that's 1000 watts or greater. Second, it should be at or above 80% efficiency, and the efficiency in this power supply is just ridiculous. Very, very impressive. It is between 89 to 92% at 20 to 100% loading. Third, it should meet the latest ATX and other current standards, environmental directives, over voltage, under voltage, and other protections. And this power supply meets all current standards. Fourth, get a power supply that has APFC. APFC, or active power factor correction, assists the power supply in being more efficient and therefore stable under load. APFC basically reduces total harmonics, corrects input voltage, and it allows for full input voltage range. And thankfully, this power Power supply has APFC. Fifth, there are three main certifications, AD Plus, NVIDIA SLI, and AMD Crossfire. Now, many of today's high-end power supplies meet one or more of these certifications, and this power supply is AD Plus Platinum certified. Sixth, look for a power supply that uses Japanese capacitors, and on the inside here, they do have Japanese capacitors. Finally, get a power supply that has enough leads for your setup. Also consider a power supply like this one that has a modular design because, well, it just cleans up all that cable mess. Also, it is very important to get a power supply with a fantastic warranty, and this one comes with a three-year warranty. Now, there's no fan in this power supply, but there's lots of ventilation holes and large heat sinks on the inside. And of course, these heat sinks will dissipate the heat it will radiate up and out of the power supply. Note that it says here, top side must be installed facing 
off. So that's very, very important. You don't want to have it, you know, like this. You don't want to have it the other way or down. You want to orientate this properly or it could overheat. And really the best location for this would be in a case that has the power supply install location at the top so the power supply can radiate all the heat out of the case. Here's the power cord connection and the power switch. Now if being fanless and platinum wasn't enough, this power supply is 100% modular. Very impressive for a fanless power supply. Now let's have a look at the modular leads again. They come in this pouch. And they're in plastic bags. They are all flat flexible leads so you'll be able to route these just about anywhere except for the main motherboard lead and the other ones are the same here. If you're looking for a brand name fanless power supply, there really isn't much to choose from. This is a fantastic one though. Amazing power supply. It is platinum, just incredible, completely modular. I love the looks on it. Perfect, as I said before, for a quiet computer build. Whether maybe you're in some kind of, you know, audio, video, music studio or whatever, or maybe you just want to have something that's super quiet. Overall, this is a 100% kick-ass product. Until next time, take care.